YouTube, what's going on today? So by the title of this video, you can tell that I'm going to be giving you guys my 2021 MLB award winners. Now, these are the guys that I think who are going to win as the MLB season is just two, two days away. Two days away. Let's go, baby. So happy. But... I'm going to give you guys my opinion on who I think will win the AL MVP, NL MVP, or the MVP awards, the Cy Young awards, and the rookies of the year. Now for these awards, I'm going to go run, or I'm going to go Dark Horse, the runner up, and then the, who I think will win it. So for the AL rookie of the year, my Dark Horse is Taylor Trammell as, as he has had a phenomenal spring. He made the Mariners roster. And he is going to absolutely go off for the Mariners, I feel like. And as him being paired with Kyle Lewis in the outfield and Kyle Seeger a little bit more, I guess, like the lineup's getting a little bit scarier in Seattle, that's for sure. But he's going to be my dark horse. Now, for coming in second in the AL Rookie of the Year voting, I have Ryan Mountcastle. Yes, I do think Ryan Mountcastle is going to have a great year, but... He is on the Orioles. I don't know how much that will affect him. I don't think he could carry his team a little bit. Although, it's not the MVP award. But, like, I think he's going to have a phenomenal year. As he can absolutely rake. Now, my winner for the AL Rookie of the Year is Bobby Dalbeck. How could you not pick this guy? Although I'm a Yankees fan, I hate picking a Red Sox. But it has to be done. Bobby Dalbeck has power. He showed that in spring. Hitting absolute tanks in spring. He can drive guys in, and he's in a very deep Red Sox lineup with J.D. Martinez, Rafael Devers, Xander Bogarts, um, Alex Verdugo, um, Christian Vasquez can even be thrown in that conversation, and he's going to be the starting first baseman in Boston. So yes, I do think he'll win the AL Rookie of the Year. Now moving on to the NL, my dark horse is Alec Bohm. I don't know if he's actually still considered a rookie. But if he is, he is my dark horse to win it. Um, he's in a good Phillies lineup. I, I do think he could. There's a possibility he can win it. But in number two, I have Dylan Carlson finishing second. Just be, He is in a great lineup in St. Louis. He has power from both sides. He has contact from both sides. He has great defense. He's going to be a huge talent in St. Louis for years to come. That is for sure. But... I think the rookie of the year is going to be Ian Anderson. Now, I don't know if he is still considered a rookie, but he is an absolute stud. He is a phenomenal changeup, a really good curveball, plus a fastball that can sit 96, 97. And we all saw what he can do in the postseason in like the big moments. That kid was electric. He had electric stuff during the regular season too. I most definitely think he is going to win the NL Rookie of the Year. I think he'll have, like, he might even be in this um, Cy Young conversation. Like, I think this guy's going to finish with, like, a 3.2, 3.1 ERA. Like, have maybe upwards of, like, 150 strikeouts. Have, like, or I should say more upwards, like, 180 strikeouts. I feel like he's going to have um, 100, like, 80, or 150 to 180 innings pitch. Like, this kid is going to be special. Now moving on to the Cy Young Awards. In the AL, my dark horse to win it is Dylan Bundy. Now, you could think I could go with like Kenta Maeda, Hinjin Ryu, right, as like my dark horses. But like those are kind of guys that you already know that have potential to win the Cy Young Awards. But I think Dylan Bundy, he showed that he could be an ace. He showed that in Baltimore one year, and then he fell off. And then he came to the Angels and showed that. And he had a phenomenal spring. Like, if Dylan Buddy can repeat what he did in 2020 in a shortened season, he definitely has a chance to be put in the Cy Young conversation. But for my number two is going to be Shane Bieber. Yes, he just came off a of Cy Young year. Yes, he won the um, Pitcher's Triple Crown. But I don't think... He definitely has the stuff, too. Don't get me wrong. And... Cleveland always has good pitching. Like, that's that's not the problem. But I don't think he's going to beat my boy, Garrett Cole, baby. Garrett Cole is going to, like, absolutely dominate this year, I feel like. He's going to go on a rampage. He's going to be like, you know what? I'm going to lead the Yankees in the World Series. I'm going to go out there every fifth day and win. I think maybe he goes undefeated. Who knows? But 
I definitely think Garrett Cole is going to be the AL Cy Young Award winner. Now moving over to the NL. My dark horse is Max Freed. Max Freed had an absolutely strong 2020. He had a pretty good 2019 too. And then his 2020 postseason was eh. Or I, I should say against the Dodgers it was eh. But he... What should I... How do I put this? He definitely has the stuff to be a Cy Young Award winner. And I do think he could possibly win it. But my number two, and this might be a shocker, is Jacob deGrom. I'm absolutely a huge Jacob deGrom fan. I was a huge fan of him like three years ago. I just loved his absolute... I just loved his hair. And it was, and just watching him pitch, he looks so beautiful pitching, right? Although I'm a Yankees fan, I just... Or I'm not... Just because I'm a Yankees fan doesn't mean I'm a hater Yankees fan. I'm a baseball fan. I just love watching baseball. And Jacob deGrom is just beautiful to watch. But I do not have him finishing over Blake Snell. I think Blake Snell is going to go absolutely off in a Padres uniform. I think he's going to go out on a revenge tour and be like, you know what? You know what, Rays? You traded me for practically nothing. I don't want to say nothing. But they that's like they he's only owed $8 million. I think he's going to go on a revenge tour. I think the Padres are going to allow to extend him. Not pass six innings in a World Series game. But I think he's going to absolutely dominate this year. And that's why I think he is going to win the NL Cy Young Award. Now to the MVPs. For my dark horses in the AL is Anthony Rendon. He is in a lineup with Mike Trout. Nothing else to be said. Shohei Otani proves he can hit. Ira Poole still might have stuff left in the tank. He has Jared Walsh in that lineup. Joe Adele, we all know is a good bat. But his defense still needs to come along. Justin Austin slowed down a little bit. Jose Iglesias can be pretty good, but I think he'll be the dark horse. Now, finishing number two, I have Mike Trout. Yes, Mike Trout's the best player in baseball. We all know this. But this year, I don't see him winning the MVP award just because... I mean, I could say Mike Trout should win it every year but i think dj lemayhew is going to win it this year no this is not yankees bias he deserves the mvp i think he will deserve the mvp this year i think he's gonna hit 25 homers drive in over over like one 110 i want to say maybe just because of how deep the yankees lineup is and one through nine like there's no really holes except for kind of gary sanchez but that is like the, how deep the lineup is. He always gets on base. He hits for average. He drives people in. Two out clutch hitting. I think he will be the 2021 AL MVP. Now for my NL MVP. My dark horse is Francisco Lindor. Yes, he just turned down a 10-year $325 million deal. Um, And so he might go out and need to prove himself a little more to maybe push that 12 million 385 I mean 12 year 385 million dollar deal that he wanted from the Mets right make him show that he earned that money right so I think he's gonna have a phenomenal season in the orange and black and I think he's gonna go absolutely off and put up an MVP case for my runner up is Ronald Acuna Jr. I think he will go 40-40 this year. I hope he cuts down on strikeouts. That's a big one. He just he just looks beautiful. His defense is great, but I don't see him beating out Juan Soto. Juan Soto is Willie Mays. I mean, not Willie Mays. He's Ted Williams in the modern era. And Juan Soto's defense is, I like to think it's a little bit above average, but the statistics say otherwise. But watching him, I feel like he's a little above average. I still believe in him to be a great fielder. Don't get me wrong. And I think the hit, his hitting will absolutely carry him in this MVP voting this year. As I think he's probably going to hit like three, 350, 340, something like that. Put up 45 homers with 130 RBIs or something like that. And take the crown for MVP. I do think Juan Soto will be the NL MVP. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As 
I just gave you my predictions on who I think will give to win the awards. And make sure you guys comment down below who do you think are going to win the AL MVP, NL MVP. Like all the awards I just stated or what do you think I'm crazy for thinking that DJ LeMay is going to beat out Mike Trout? You know, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you leave a like, comment, subscribe. You know, we're on the road to 50 subscribers. No, that's not a lot. But yes, we are trying to build a community. So let's build it together. Make sure you subscribe to Papa Too Good. Tell everybody you know. Have a great rest of your day. Love you guys. Peace.